Hi guys and welcome to Total Technic. In today's video we're working on the Audi A6. This is the C6 or the 4F platform and this is the 2 litre TDI. What we are going to do in today's video is do a full cam belt change including water pump. Now we've had a look at some of the, uh, the videos that are already out there uh, for the cam belt change on this particular car and the, uh, the standard of those videos uh, varies quite dramatically. However, what we noticed in, in some of those videos in particular, they don't cover some of the finer points of this cam belt change, which are really, really important. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be fitting the genuine uh, Audi kit, and we're gonna take you through it step by step. Uh, so what we've gotta do is follow along, and we're gonna show you some of these uh, finer points that are often overlooked. So, let's get stuck in. Okay, now before you get stuck in and replace the cam belt on your car, you've got to ask yourself the reasons why you're replacing the cam belt on your car. Obviously, if your cam belt is due its, uh, its uh, service, then yeah, absolutely, it needs to be done. However, if you're looking at uh, replacing the cam belt because you're experiencing uh, potential timing issues or what you believe are timing issues, symptoms of which could be things like uh, a rough idle uh, when the car is cold, uh, also smoke uh, when the car is cold, uh, they can be symptoms of, uh, of your... Uh, timing being very, very slightly out as well. Things like uh, if your uh, glow plug light flashes when you uh, uh, give the car a boost of acceleration, all, all these kind of things can be attributed uh, to the timing being slightly off. Now the timing on these can actually be fine tuned. There's a piece of software called VCDS, also known as VAGCOM, which is excellent uh, for fine, to helping you uh, fine tune the, um, the, the cams that are on this car. Uh, what we'll do is we're going to uh, get stuck in now into actually the, the whole process of the cam belt change itself. But towards the end of the video, what we'll do is we'll actually go into uh, VCDS and we'll show you the settings and what each of the two cams are for. And so, you know, if you've got a, a problem that you think the, uh, the timing might be slightly off, you might be able to get away using VCDS, which is VAGCOM, uh, to make adjustments to your cams rather than having to do the whole cam belt change process. We'll cover that at the end of the video, so make sure you watch this, uh, this video uh, in its entirety before you actually get stuck into to the work. But we don't want to bore you anymore, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the, uh, the process for getting the, uh, the cam belt changed, but be sure to check out the end of the video where we're going to cover some of the, uh, the finer points about the tuning, etc. So let's move on. Okay, so changing the cam belt on the 2 litre TDI. There's a couple of things you need to do, uh, first of all, before you can actually start the process. First of all, you need to remove your bumper, and then you need to remove your headlights. And then once you've got those removed, you need to remove the front of the car into the service position. Uh, if you have a look at what we've done here, the front of this car is actually already in the service position. So when you look down the front here, you've actually got plenty of room to reach down and um, do whatever it is you need to do. Uh, so this is already in the service position. Now if you're unsure on how to remove the, uh, the front bumper, it's actually dead easy on these. Uh, same with the headlights, it's actually quite easy as well. Uh, the, uh, getting the car into the uh, service position doesn't take that long. There are a few essential steps. But what we've done, we've already filmed uh, separate videos on all three of those for you. So if you're unsure on how to do any of those, we've got links for you uh, below this video. So you can just scroll down, check that out. Uh, get your bumper removed, your headlights removed, get the uh, get your lock carrier into the service position and once you've got that you can actually start the cam belt process itself. So be sure to check those videos out, come back when you're at this stage and we'll crack on with the cam belt. Okay so a quick look at what your uh, cam belt kit should include. This is the official uh, Audi cam belt kit. Uh, you do not have to fit the, uh, the official Audi one of course, uh, there are plenty of uh, aftermarket ones uh, but this is what your, uh, your kit should uh, include. Uh, so there's your uh, your main tensioner. Uh, there's one of the uh, dampeners. Uh, another roller there. The brand new bolts. And in the uh, the box at the bottom there, uh, we will have obviously the uh, the belt the belt itself. So uh, when you come to buy your uh, cam belt kit, uh, make sure that it's definitely got all of those uh, included. Uh, and also in addition to that, as I mentioned at the start of the video, we're going to be changing the uh, the water pump as well. And here is the uh, genuine uh, Audi uh, water pump. Okay, so one of the things you're going to need uh, to do this job is obviously you're going to need a cam belt kit. You can actually buy uh, little cheap uh, kits for this particular engine for about £10, which is about $14. Uh, $14. And it will come with, you need, uh, you need uh, these two, you need two of them. Uh, these uh, for, the, uh, for the crank, uh, they usually come with, with two, so two different types of uh, teeth. And uh, various other kind of... Um, locking pins and stuff as well uh, that's going to be used as well so there's various other bits like so you can buy the basic kit uh, on ebay uh, for about 10 pounds 14 dollars 
uh, this particular kit uh, also came with the um, the locking pins for setting it in the in the uh, service position, and it comes with uh, uh, this tool for adjusting the the um, idler as well, uh, the idler tensioner, to allow you to, to make the adjustment. But all of these now come with a, a hex in the middle anyway, so you don't necessarily need that tool. Uh, one of these kits, uh, you can get these uh, these basic kits on eBay for about thirty-five pounds, what forty-five dollars, something like that. Um, but you do get the lock carrier pins and a couple of extra bits, and this will do pretty much any Audi up to kind of two litre petrol and diesel. So it's up to you, uh, but either way, obviously, you're not going to get very far without the correct uh, locking tools. Okay, so, first thing we need to do is uh, get the uh, auxiliary drive belt out of the way, also known as a poly V belt. Uh, if you look down into the engine here, obviously, this is this uh, belt here, uh, runs around the, uh, the alternator, um, air con pump, and various other things, and around the um, Got the outside of the uh, the uh, crank pulley there as well, as uh, so this is the uh, the first thing that we need to get removed. One thing to bear in mind very quickly before you remove this uh, this belt, if you're intending to refit the uh, the same belt, i.e., it's not been on the car that long, what you should do is get some chalk and just mark the direction. Uh, put a little arrow on there uh, to mark the direction that the uh, that the belts are uh, going to be refitted in. So if you put an arrow pointing to the right, then when you come to refit it, to make sure obviously that arrow is still pointing to the right. Uh, the reason being is um, these um, uh, these pulleys etc. Uh, they've obviously got grooves on them. They actually wear into the grooves that are on the belt. Uh, so any kind of uh, malformation, etc., that's on any of these pulleys will be on this on this tough belt. They kind of shape themselves, as it were, to, to the pulleys. If you then take that belt and put it on the opposite way around, when you refit it, it will uh, kind of carve those grooves again in the opposite direction. It can weaken the belt and might cause it to break. So good practice. Uh, if you're going to reuse the belt, chalk arrow on it and make sure that that chalk arrow is facing in the same direction uh, when you stick it back on at the end. Okay, so let's get the uh, the cam cover off. Yeah. These uh, little clips. There's two on this side. And there's one down on the side. I can just see it there. Get those removed, and the whole kind of thing lifts up and, and then pops off. There, that's it. And for the sharp ride uh, amongst you, you may well have spotted as I've uh, removed this. Uh, they got all kind of uh, crazy uh, pen marks here, uh, where they've obviously had some problems. Uh, setting up or trying to fine-tune the uh, timing which is something that we'll look at at the end of the video uh, but this is exactly the sort of thing uh, that, I was at, that I mentioned earlier um, this is the kind of stuff we uh, we want to avoid with this video okay grab yourself a size 16 spanner and put that on the nut that is on the front of the tensioner as you lift it up you turn it clockwise you can see the whole thing moves uh, including the uh, the plate at the back uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to lift this whole thing up and uh, put your uh, your locking tool through the back of it and uh, try to lock it in place when it's at its maximum um, extension. So you sit and go, that's now locked into place. Once that's done, just pop that belt off like so. Okay, next uh, we're going to need to access some screws on the vibration dampener here. As you may just be able to see, kind of in the uh, in the mirror there, it's actually got like a um, rubber cap on the front of it. So that's what we need to get off first. Okay, so if you look in the middle of that damper, uh, what you'll see there in the middle is a 12 pointed um, nut there, and that was a size 19. And around the outside of it, uh, you've got these uh, smaller, uh, these are spline or ribs, and they're size 10. Uh, so, what we're going to need to do is uh, undo those, um, those uh, spline ones, those uh, size 10s, whilst counter holding the uh, big one in the middle. There we go, so those are the little uh, spline size 10. 
and uh, there's, there's four of those dotted around the uh, the outside edge there. Uh, but what you've got to do is you've got to make sure that you're counter holding the uh, the center. So you put your size 19 uh, socket on the one side, and then as you uh, turn it, uh, the side that you're holding uh, will obviously uh, stop the uh, the actual thing from from turning. So you're kind of re opposite resistance if you like. Uh, that's what you've got to do. You've got to remove all of those. Okay, so this is the last of these uh, bolts coming out, as you can see. Got a lot of uh, movement on it now, so this is ready just to uh, to slip off. This is the last bolt. Just pop that to the side, nice and safe. And just gently pull that pulley off to the front. There we go, that's that one removed. So next we've got these little um, cam belt covers here uh, that sit in front of the cam belt assembly. They're size 10. Just grab yourself a size 10. And just start to remove the, uh, the bolts. So we've got one there. There's another one just here on this uh, bottom corner, just there. And the next one's down on the, uh, the bottom corner here. Uh, this right next to the um, auxiliary uh, tensioner. That's the next one there. So with those three bolts removed, this uh, upper cover, wriggle that out of place. And there you go, and it shows you the uh, position of the uh, three bolts there. So that's the upper cover, upper cover removed. Now we also have a lower cover, and if we have a look down there, you can just see, uh, just down there, we've got uh, again, uh, two size 10 bolts. There's one there and one kind of somewhere over there on the other side, just there, look. Uh, so get those two removed and then we can get that plate off as well. Match the, uh, the lower cover there as well. These are the, uh, the two bolts we just removed. Okay, so we now have access to the cam belt assembly. Let's point out a couple of the, uh, the kind of the main um, components that we're going to be working with. Obviously, at the top here, we've got the uh, the two cams, and that's kind of where you can see the belt the best. Uh, for your uh, reference, this is the uh, this is the exhaust cam uh, on this side, and this is the inlet cam uh, on that side. Uh, when it comes to getting your kind of fine tuning adjustments, if, if they're required uh, using VCDS, uh, you'll need to know which of those two is which. Uh, moving down, uh, that's the air tensioner right there. This one down here, that's the, uh, the head of the water pump uh, just there. So we're going to be replacing that. It's always a good idea to replace the water pump if you're doing the cam belt because it's an ideal opportunity to, to get it done. And obviously that's the, uh, that's the main bad boy at the bottom, that's the, uh, that's the crank. Uh, right there. So next, going back to your um, your cam belt locking set, uh, what we're going to need uh, for the next bit uh, is these two little tools here uh, for locking the cams, and also we're going to we'll take both of these over. So let's have a look at let's have a bit of a look at these in more detail in a second. Okay, so those are fairly straightforward. They're, they they're just going to go straight in as you'll see in a second. However, these, uh, even the cheap sets that you buy for about £10 uh, on eBay, uh, come with both of these uh, tools um, included. Uh, that's because th these are, these are going to lock onto the, um, the uh, crank uh, down at the uh, bottom of the engine. And uh, there's two types uh, that can be fitted to your car, hence they have to supply two tools. And the thing to look out for is kind of the, the marks that are on these, uh, corresponding with the marks uh, that are on the actual um, crankshaft uh, Kind of a centre bolt itself. So we look at the first one here. Now you've got a little arrow just here. And you see this arrow points to the tip of the uh, of the tooth. So when you line this up, if your crank has got a marking um, that goes uh, into the it doesn't go to the uh, the edge of the tooth, it comes to kind of the the middle of the cog. If that makes any sense. So those two would line up. Uh, hopefully it's make a little bit more sense when I show you the uh, the second one. Now the second one, instead of having the um, the arrow at the tip of the of the kind of cog there, what we have on this one, what I'll do is I'll just zip this end off, make it a little bit easier for you to see. There we go. Now see on this one we've got the arrow, but the arrow is not on the uh, the tip of uh, the cog. Uh, kind of the male part as it was on the uh, on the other one on the other one it's on the kind of the 
the male part if you like. This is actually on the kind of tip of the female part. So it depends what the arrow is, so the marking that you've got uh, on the uh, on the crank itself, you have to correspond it with the uh, kind of correct the correct tool. It make it makes sense when you're looking at the uh, the crank, uh, but do bear that in mind uh, that there are two versions, uh, but even the cheapest sets that you can buy should come with both. Okay, so next we're going to be locking, uh, using the locking tools to lock this into position. Before we do that, uh, we've actually got to get it to top dead centre. Uh, now to allow us to do that, we're going to um, actually manipulate the uh, the crankshaft, turn the crankshaft, which will in turn um, uh, turn the uh, cams here and allow us to get the locking tools in place. Uh, one thing to, um, to kind of look at is uh, kind of how these cams work. Obviously we've got these round circles around the outside and kind of within the inner circle uh, we've got this kind of window uh, here, which has got like um, serrations, like little teeth on it. Uh, that's your top dead centre window. So you can see we've actually gone a little bit past top dead centre at the moment. This should be at this kind of position. And the holes that we're going to be using uh, for the locking pins are the outermost ones. So when this is in this position, this little slot here, which is the outermost one, uh, it's going to take one of the locking pins and on the uh, other one here, again, when this is rewound here, it'll be this slot, the outermost one, uh, that's going to take the pin as well. Uh, so that's one thing to bear in mind. Uh, another thing also is when you turn the, um, when, we, when we do the other uh, turn on the, uh, on the crank here at the bottom, it actually takes two revolutions uh, of the crank to uh, turn these once. So every two uh, revolutions uh, at the bottom uh, gives you one rev uh, revolution at the top. Which is why it's quite useful to do this because you can get the um, the crank in uh, top dead centre position but this, uh, this section here will be at the bottom which is obviously no good at all. So you've got to turn that round twice to bring that back round up to top dead centre here. So two down there equals one up here. Uh, so bear that in mind as well. Okay, so to adjust the uh, crank, uh, to get this back to top dead centre, uh, you must turn this uh, clockwise, okay, only in a clockwise direction. Uh, you cannot turn it anti-clockwise. You can turn it anti-clockwise just a, a tiny bit if you need to kind of wobble it backwards and forwards to kind of get a, a pin to a line or something like that, but you can continuously turn it anti-clockwise. So you can only turn it in a clockwise uh, direction, which is what we're going to do here. And remember that two, uh, two revolutions uh, it takes two revolutions at the bottom to get this one revolution at the top. So just keep adjusting this until uh, the uh, marker here on the cam, which is the one uh, top dead centre marker with the little teeth on it, has come back round and we're nearly at top dead centre and then we'll pick it up from that position. Okay, so I've turned it back round. You can see we're going we're to be coming up to a, a top dead centre. Uh, with another couple of turns uh, down the bottom. So what I'm going to do at this stage, make sure I've got the uh, the crank uh, locking tool. I've selected the uh, the correct one for the particular uh, crank um, kind of cog that I've got fitted on this car. Um, so what we'll do is uh, as we bring this round uh, to top dead centre, we're going to get this tool locked in and we're going to ensure that the arrow uh, on this tooth uh, right there is going to align uh, with the arrow on the cog of the uh, crank at the bottom there. Okay, now as we come back round uh, to top dead centre, what I'm having a little look at is just whereabouts the uh, the arrow is uh, located. Uh, there it is. Okay, so we know that this particular tool has its uh, tooth uh, right there, and on the back of the tool uh, we've actually got the locking pin. Okay, so when we lock this in, we've got to make sure that the uh, the arrows uh, face one another, uh, kind of on the same cog, if you like and the locking pin locks in. And where it locks in, so if you have a look down uh, just at the back, you should see it just there. Uh, there's a little hole there, so that locking pin's going to uh, slide into that hole there and that'll lock the whole thing into position. So let's have a quick look, see how far out we are at the moment. It's fitting on nicely, uh, but that won't be aligned just yet, I wouldn't think. Okay, so I know on my uh, on the tool there, Let's adjust this mirror so you can see uh, on the tool. See it's on the uh, second to last. So on the tool we've got the, uh, the arrow just there and we can see below it uh, we are one uh, tooth out at the moment. So the arrow on the uh, on the crank compared to the uh, arrow on the uh, on the tool. So we're literally one tooth out at the moment. So we've got to rotate it just a tiny little bit more, one tooth, and then we should be able to snap that into place. 
Okay, so I know I'm going to go by one tough. There. So I moved it across by one tooth and slotted that in. And I'll just grab the mirror and we'll just double check that's in the uh, in the correct place before we move forward. Okay, I must always double check. Okay, there you go. Hopefully you guys again can see that pretty clearly uh, on the video. Let me just change the angle of the mirror for you there. That should be a good angle. We can see that those two arrows, uh, the arrow on the tool and the arrow on the, uh, on the crank itself are perfectly lined up. And we've got the pin uh, locked in perfectly uh, into the hole there at the back of the tool. That's all slotted in absolutely perfectly. So the crank is now locked in top dead center. Okay, so we're happy that we've locked the crank. Uh, we're now going to look at the cams. Now, if you remember correctly, that's the outside ones uh, that contain the, uh, the slots for the locking tool. Now, if you're very, very lucky and you have absolutely 100% perfect alignment, you'll just push that in and that'll slide straight to the back, absolutely no problems at all. And the same on the other side. In here, you put your tool in, press it in and that just slots straight to the back uh, as you can see in the real world uh, it doesn't always happen like that and uh, we know uh, this particular car's had a little bit of fiddling done with it um, it's kind of unlikely that it will go straight in I don't know how well you guys can make that out on the uh, on the video uh, but it'll make more sense when you're kind of looking at it in real life uh, the hole that's right at the back uh, you can s I can see it quite well it probably didn't show up very well on the video um, but you can kind of see that the hole isn't quite aligned, it's a couple of millimetres out, or probably not even that to be fair. And I assume, yeah, likewise uh, on here as well. Again, it's a kind of a bit of a game of angles really. Uh, there, you could almost see it there. There, that's a good view. You can see we're not quite aligned, you can see the hole right at the back and we don't quite have the alignment that we need to slide those pins in perfectly with the uh, the, the crank uh, in, in top dead centre position. Um, if yours do, wonderful, uh, great stuff, um, but on, you know, depending on your age, your mileage, uh, it's kind of unlikely that they will, so we might have to make a minor adjustment, which is what we're going to do in this case. Okay, now if you're in uh, the same position that we are and you're finding your uh, locking pins uh, aren't quite fitting straight in, uh, don't worry, that's that's fairly common, that's kind of all, all part of the job. Now the uh, the Audi Workshop uh, manual, if you, if you follow that by the word, uh, in an ideal world, says you put your locking pins uh, in to your two cams, and then once the locking pins are in, you're actually slacking off these uh, these nuts, these uh, six nuts, you don't remove them, you just slacken off uh, these nuts to allow a little bit of uh, movement. And that's actually how you fine tune uh, these two cams, uh, which is useful when you've got um, software like VCDS, uh, which as I explained before, we will cover uh, towards the end of this video, give you a few pointers on how to uh, to use that software to, to fine tune uh, using the uh, the slight adjustment this gives you. Uh, but like I said, don't panic because uh, what we'll do is we'll actually counter hold the uh, center bolt uh, whilst, undo whilst undoing these to slacken them off. Um, and then once we've done that, the, give the cam a tiny little bit of movement. Uh, and once you've got that tiny little bit of movement, we'll be able to stick the, uh, the locking pin in then. Uh, so it's, it's not a problem. We're just kind of doing it rather than locking pin and then slacking off the nuts. We're going to slacken off the nuts, then put the locking pins in. Uh, but we've got to make sure we counter hold this uh, just to kind of uh, stop the resistance and stop these trying to kind of uh, turn any further, if that makes any sense. So that's the next stage. OK, so the, uh, the centre one's uh, size 18. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a, a breaker bar on there so I can uh, feel the uh, resistance as I uh, try and undo these. Now these are size 13 and you only really want to undo these a couple of turns. So that's about that much is absolutely perfect. I'm just going to repeat that. Okay, I get to that one, I have to change my angle for that one. You guys get the idea. There we go. Like so. That's what we're going to do. Whilst counter holding, we're going to slacken off. Remember, don't remove, just slacken off uh, all six of these nuts. Okay, now, so now we've uh, slackened these off, what we can do is use this, uh, this center bolt to actually move this uh, backwards and forwards to allow us to get the pin in. 
So as we were doing before, you can have a look for yourself using the mirror to see kind of um, how far out of alignment you are. Uh, hopefully it should only be, you know, a millimetre or, or less, ideally. Uh, you know, it should almost go in, just not quite. And what you're going to do is just use this centre bolt just to manipulate it, just so you can get this locked into the correct position. Okay, now at this stage we've been playing around with this for a good 45 minutes or so with the uh, the locking uh, tools. Uh, we cannot get these pins uh, to actually go into the holes. Um, thankfully we've also got the uh, the official Sealy kit, which is a bit more of an expensive option. Uh, there's the uh, the part number right there if you uh, if you want to have a look at the Sealy kit. Uh, this is the Sealy kit for the um, for the two litre TDI. Uh, so we've got the uh, the proper Sealy pins uh, here as well. Uh, likewise, exactly the same problem. Uh, we've got this perfectly aligned. Like I said, I've been working with this for a good 45 minutes or so, trying to work this out. You can see you can just get the uh, the very tip of the tool in there. You can kind of feel when it kind of goes in, but it won't go in any further than that. You can literally just get the tip in like so. However, when you get something uh, something else that's just a tiny bit narrow, this is a 5.5 pop that in you can see that will go all the way into the uh, to the back there I'll just show, show you that that goes in the full uh, the full length so that's the full length of the uh, the pin is around that point there so that goes in goes through all the way in like so so uh, we don't know uh, what the reason is uh, normally these pins should just go straight into those holes and uh, no problems whatsoever uh, you sometimes got to adjust the, uh, the 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 center of these uh, cams just to you know fractions of a millimetre backwards and forwards just to allow you to wobble these in but no matter how hard we try and like I said I've been doing this for 45 minutes or so these are not going to go in um, but we're not here to solve the, uh, the mysteries of the universe just the way it is and we're going to crack on and get the job done uh, so what we're going to do I mean we are going to use the uh, allen keys uh, just to uh, to lock this in position that's all it is just a metal pin uh, in a hole that basically stops it stops it turning so that's what we're going to use as, as a makeshift and uh, like I say hopefully you won't have that issue um, hopefully your pins will just fit straight into those holes but that's our situation so uh, that's how we're going to do it today okay one more thing to point out obviously when you're using your uh, your uh, proper pins uh, which which hopefully should fit straight in for you uh, when you put them in they literally go all the way into you know almost um, the end so all you can see sticking out of them when you put that in that hole uh, should be just the head and just you know just a couple of millimeters of, of the silver so if you try and put this in obviously that's just touching the uh, the edge of the hole there that's about as far in as we can get but let's say you get it in a bit further than that it might be enough to lock it but don't you know you shouldn't consider it safe until you've pushed it all the way through so just to uh, show you again how far in they should go uh, that's the uh, that's the full length of the pin right there so there literally to the end so when you've got these two two in you should literally just see the uh, the head the ball uh, on the end there Okay, so a quick double check just at this stage uh, before we uh, go ahead and get this belt removed. What you should have, just double check that you've got it all aligned correctly. Uh, you should have your uh, locking tool here on the uh, crank at the bottom. And uh, you, uh, as we covered, the arrows uh, should be aligned and it should be fitted into the, uh, the hole uh, on the, uh, on the uh, engine just there. And you've locked off your, um, your two cams here and you've slackened off uh, each of these uh, six nuts here. Uh, so make sure you've done all of that and then the next thing we're going to look at is the tensioner. Okay size 15 socket onto the centre of the tensioner just there and just crack this uh, nut off. There we go. Okay yeah. Okay, so as we saw, uh, when we undid this centre nut, uh, the actual tensioner didn't um, roll back kind of under its own steam, as it were. So obviously the belt's uh, still on there with the same tension, so we're going to roll this back manually. Now to do this, um, there's uh, either this, uh, this little kit, which actually comes in that um, a big uh, cam belt kit that we showed you earlier. Uh, Sealy and various other companies make a version of this. Uh, it's got two pins, which slot into the, uh, the two little holes. Uh, either side just there and you can turn it using that uh, if you don't have this tool then you can see uh, in the uh, in the center there in between the two holes is actually a, a hex uh, like an allen key uh, type um, hole right in the center there so you can use that as an alternative uh, if you don't have this tool remember you must only turn this uh, anti-clockwise Take 
all the tension off of it, like so. There we go. So with the tension released, uh, we now can see uh, we've got a lot more movement on the belt. So next stage, get the belt removed. see uh, that's the, uh, the belt off. Okay so with the belt removed uh, we're now going to get rid of the, uh, the uh, tensioner. So what we want to do is get rid of this centre nut. Uh, obviously we're going to replace this tensioner with the nice shiny brand new one uh, that's come in the new cam belt kit. Uh, same with the, uh, the guides and pulleys. Uh, so that's the first thing is get that nut removed. A bit of a wobble see the whole unit will pop off like so. So next we'll remove the other lower one here, so size 13. Next onto the air dampener, size 16. Okay, so having a look at the uh, the cam belt kit. Uh, just a reminder, this is the the kit that we're going to be refitting is the genuine uh, Audi one. So all these parts that are in here, um, you all should hopefully look very similar to this. Even if you're not using the genuine kit, this is what they should look like. As you can see, we've got two uh, threaded rods. Uh, one of which has got like a flat flat section uh, in it, just there, and the other is threaded pretty much all the way, apart from the little section there. And we've got the uh, the new uh, dampener nut that we're just looking at. Uh, sorry, bolt just there. And we've got a couple of new new nuts there as well. Now, what these actually uh, refer to? Let's grab my uh, mirror so I can point it out to you. Uh, this is the one that the uh, the tensioner came off of, uh, right here. And uh, obviously we've got the other uh, lower roller uh, down at the bottom there as well. As you can see, that's the one that's got the uh, the long kind of blank bit uh, in the middle, and then the uh, the tensioner one is the the full almost the full uh, threaded bar. If that makes any sense. So what we're going to do is actually uh, replace replace these. Uh, so this is going to be our new uh, uh, tensioner uh, fixing, and this is going to be the uh, the new uh, roller one for, for down the bottom there as well. Uh, so we're going to be fitting uh, both of these and replacing these uh, these pins right here. So first things first, uh, we need to get them uh, get them unscrewed. Uh, to do that, if you grab the uh, the the two nuts uh, that came off of these, what we're going to do is we're going to put them uh, back to back. If I just screw these on a second, I'll show you what I mean. Now the theory is when you tighten these two up together, when you uh, unscrew the, uh, the inner nut, the uh, inner nut won't be able to move back up the uh, thread, and so what it will do is it will actually turn the, the whole thing. Okay, so a quick explanation of, uh, of what we did there. As you can see, these are the, uh, the two nuts uh, back to back, and it's very uh, useful, nice little tip. First thing to put on should really be your, your spanner. Uh, 
working down the bottom, it's nice to have one with an angled head. Uh, so I put that on first, so that was already on there. And then put the uh, the first bolt on there, wound that down, and then put the uh, second bolt on there and, and tighten them up. Uh, once the second bolt was on there, I tightened that one into the uh, the first bolt, so those were quite tight together. Be careful when you do that, because obviously when you do that, you don't want to be turning the the whole thing back into the uh, into the engine. Then, uh, when you're ready to uh, when it's in place and ready to remove it, obviously you're going to put the uh, your uh, spanner on the inside nut. This is going to turn anti-clockwise because this is the uh, the one that's actually going to uh, unscrew this from the engine. And what you'll find is if it's in quite tight, just this one was, when you do this, uh, this gap will tighten up even further between the two nuts. And then you might find that both the nuts actually start turning together, uh, which is what we had in, in, in this case. If that's the, uh, if that's the case for you, uh, what you want to do is uh, put another spanner on the ends nut and, and just to kind of counter counter turn your own kind of power if, if you like. So you're holding that nut head in the reverse, you're t basically turning it that way whilst turning the other one more that way. And so you're kind of, you're locking them, to, locking them together as it were. So as that moves this way, I'm locking it as if I, as if I were tightening in it on the other uh, first one. And then just let the whole thing come as one. And uh, you will, with a little bit of wrestling, uh, get it get it removed. Uh, but that's how you uh, get these out. Okay, so now we're going to fit the uh, the stud back in. Uh, this is the brand new stud. We're uh, going to do this, uh, refit refit these before we remove the water pump. Uh, so obviously we don't want any coolant dripping into the open holes that we've left. Uh, so this is what we're going to do next. As you can see uh, on these ones, uh, they come with a kind of a nut lock, um, which has got a dried in there. That's how they come from the Audi factory. Hopefully yours has that. Uh, if yours doesn't, uh, you're going to need to get yourself some uh, nut lock. Uh, this is nut lock right here, um, and you want to make sure you get nut lock, not thread lock. Nut lock's generally blue, blue thread lock's generally red, but that can vary um, from uh, from manufacturer to manufacturer. Uh, but nut lock is like um, a, a temporary um, kind of adhesive, if you like. So it will hold it in place, and it will hold it a lot tighter uh, than it would than it would uh, without it. But most importantly, it will stop it coming undone due to kind of rattles or things of that nature. If you put thread lock on there, that's uh, that's intended to be a permanent uh, fix. And so if you fix that in there with thread lock rather than nut lock, you really struggle to ever get that out again. Uh, so make sure you put nut lock on there. Okay, so as before, we need to uh, set the, uh, the the two nuts up. I'm using the old the old ones uh, just for now. Like so. And then what I'll do is I'll uh, put the uh, the correct spanner, my size 13. I'll put that on there uh, so that that's ready to uh, to do that nut. A little spot uh, more of a nut lock on there, and then we'll uh, start screwing this in. And the second spanner, as you can see I'm not using that at the moment, that's just on there if I do have to count a hold to kind of tighten it up. Uh, what you want to do is tighten this uh, till it's uh, all the way uh, in, 
and then just give it a little bit of a hand tighten. It's only meant to be 15 uh, newton meters, which is hardly anything, so you really don't want to over tighten it when you get to the end of the thread. I mean, that second spanner that I've got in there may not even be used, uh, but it might be quite handy to get the uh, the two nuts off uh, at the end of the process. Okay, so we're getting to the end now. So it's only 15 newton meters, which is, like I said, 15 newton meters really isn't a lot, so I don't want to over tighten that. There. There we go. So that's all. Uh, that's all removed. So we're going to do exactly the same uh, in a second on the uh, on the stud for the uh, tensioner. And like I said, 15 newton meters really isn't very much. Be careful not to over tighten it. Uh, you're going to kind of rely on the uh, on the nut lock to uh, kind of do its job and lock that in in place. Uh, but do not over tighten that. Uh, if you need to get a feel for what 15 newton meters is like. Uh, most uh, torque wrenches won't go that low, uh, but if yours does, uh, get, kind of put it on a, a nut, maybe on a wheel nut, and just kind of get a little bit of a feel for what that feels like, uh, you know, or maybe do it at 25, whatever your minimum is, get a feel for it, and you'll feel that it's not very, very tight at all. Uh, so we'll do the, uh, do the one for the uh, tensioner next. Okay, looking at the water pump on these, really, really simple units, basically just a kind of a, a big big bearing, really. So all it does is your, your cam belt drives this, and obviously that spins the uh, spins this little kind of a fan uh, arrangement that they've got on the uh, on the end, and that's going to uh, pump water through the system, uh, coolant through the system. Uh, not everyone replaces the uh, the water pump, uh, but these, because uh, they're so simple, these are quite cheap. The genuine ones, uh, like this genuine Audi one here, is probably 40, 45 pounds, about $60, something like that. And you can get non-genuine ones for kind of 25 pounds, $35. Uh, something like that. It might actually be a little bit cheaper than that, uh, but then they're, they're really not big money. So if you go into the uh, the hassle of removing uh, your your cam belt, uh, obviously you have to remove your cam belt to change this. So this is the perfect op opportunity to do it. So it's, it's an optional thing, but well recommended if you're doing your cam belt anyway. Okay, so if you look down at the old original uh, water pump that's in situ, you can see this uh, this kind of poking out section here. That's obviously this section here. So this gives you an idea of where you're looking for the uh, the bolts. There's three bolts that hold it in. Uh, one at the top, one to the right, and one lower left. Uh, so those are the three bolts that we need to remove. So these uh, bolts are size 10. Uh, so I've just showed you the uh, location of them. Uh, so just get all three uh, removed. Uh, the actual um, water pump itself should stay in uh, situ. Uh, with the three bolts removed, uh, they, they usually uh, take a little bit of a uh, force to uh, to get them pulled out. But get those uh, three bolts removed. So the three bolts have been removed, now we're ready to remove the uh, water pump. Uh, sometimes these can be stuck in quite hard. Oh, this one's not too bad. Uh, just pull it out a little bit, just let the, uh, let the coolant drain. If you pull it all the way out, then obviously you'll have a load of coolant that comes out at the same time. Just let it, just let it flow out. So we've got the tray at the bottom to, uh, to catch it. Uh, but that is your water pump removed. I'm also draining it. Uh, again, this is if you're not doing the full coolant uh, change. If you are, you probably would have done this already when you leak the uh, coolant down. Uh, just open that up, that'll help prevent uh, any air locks. Okay, so now all the coolant's uh, out. What I'm going to do is just carefully uh, dry the area up as best as uh, as best as we can. 
Okay, so time to fit the uh, the new water pump into place. And now, as you'll see, uh, sometimes they're already on there, sometimes they're kind of in a, a little plastic uh, packet inside the box. This one's already been fitted for us. And you've got this rubber uh, O-ring around the centre here. Now, ideally, what we want to do is uh, lubricate this, so when you're pushing it back into the uh, the metal of the engine, it doesn't kind of catch, and uh, you know, um, you're going to reduce the uh, the risk of potentially damaging this gasket here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to lubricate this. Um, now, the best way to do this, as per Audi Workshop um, instruction manual, is to use a bit of your uh, your coolant, uh, undiluted, uh, it's meant to be G12 in this particular car, and actually wet this using a G12. Um, undiluted uh, coolant. Uh, you should do that rather than use a, um, a kind of a, a, a grease uh, or something like that because obviously you're introducing uh, something into the coolant system that potentially shouldn't be in there. So that's what we're going to do is get some uh, G12 uh, or whatever coolant you're using and get the neat stuff rather than the diluted stuff and just give that a bit of a wet before we, that, we insert that into the engine. Give it a little bit of a twist like that to align the uh, the holes if need be. What you want to do is just hand tighten all uh, all three uh, to begin with, and then when you come to uh, to tighten these up, you want to uh, rather than tighten one up and then move to the next one, you kind of want to um, tighten them evenly, go around in a circle, so that you're pulling the uh, the body of the water pump evenly in uh, towards the uh, the engine, making sure that the uh, that it seals correctly. Uh, to the front of the engine. Okay, so like I said before, uh, just to tighten these up, just kind of go around in a circle, tightening each one up a, a little bit. Uh, you don't need a nut lock if you go and buy the uh, Audi Workshop uh, manual on this. You don't need lock, uh, nut lock on these. I guess it's because there's uh, there's three of them. So very, very unlikely to uh, all three of them to work their way, uh, rattle their way loose. So just go around in a circle like that. That'll make sure that you pull the uh, body in evenly. And then once you're happy, then what you want to do is tighten these to approximately 15 newton meters again. So remember, as before, 15 newton meters isn't a lot. So next we're going to do the uh, the lower uh, roller, and that's the small one there. And uh, in your kit, um, you'll have uh, two different types of uh, nuts. Uh, obviously, one's for the uh, tensioner, and one's for the lower roller. It's the uh, the smaller one, the size 13 there, uh, that goes on the uh, small lower roller. The, uh, the new nut going on here as well. Remember this is the size 13. Uh, as per Audi Workshop, uh, you do not need a nut lock uh, on this particular nut. And this gets tightened uh, to uh, 20 newton meters. Again, that's probably off the scale for most standard um, torque wrenches. Most of them don't go that low, uh, but again, try and get a, a feel for it. Most of them go about 25 to get a feel for that and then go a little bit under 25 when you come to tighten this up. Like so. so next we're doing the, uh, the upper roller, uh, dampener, uh, and a uh, brand new bolt. Again, no knock lock required on this one. And uh, when you come to uh, tighten this one up, this is 40 newton meters, and this will uh, this will register on your uh, on most uh, torque wrenches. Uh, so we're going to do this one properly with the torque wrench. So 
So once you've done the uh, the centre bolt up to uh, 40 newton meters, uh, we've also got to uh, turn an additional 90 degrees. So it's obviously a, a quarter of a, a circle. So I'm just going to get myself as close as I can to kind of 12 o'clock as it were, and I'm going to turn it through to to three o'clock, and that'll give us the uh, additional 90 degrees that we need. On there like so. So next you want to grab your uh, tensioner and just make sure it's in, in this position here. So this is the section that, that the tool clips into to actually uh, turn the, uh, the tensioner. So you've got this metal stop uh, just here in the corner. That should kind of fit into this kind of space here. And that will give you access. It will mean that this um, little slot here will be in the middle of this kind of little locking area. Uh, so make sure it's in this position. Now yours may come um, with a key already inserted, a locking key already inserted. The uh, genuine Audi ones don't. So what you want to use is you. This is the um, this is the little uh, locking tool that comes with the uh, Sealy kit that we showed you earlier on. Uh, but basically anything that you get that you can get into that that hole. So you, it's just literally to uh, to stop it. So you can put like a small flat-headed screwdriver, whatever you can, uh, just in there. Push that in nice and tight. And that will uh, that will stop that from uh, being able to turn uh, beyond obviously the uh, top and bottom points there. And like I say, if you haven't got the actual locking tool, because this we don't get one like this supplied in the larger kit that I showed you earlier, and you can just put a screwdriver or an Allen key or something similar in there just to hold it in place um, when you're going to be tension, tensioning it up uh, in a short while. So taking a quick look at the uh, the tensioner here. Uh, if you look at the back of it, uh, we've got the, this little kind of arrow and we've got this gauge here which we're going to use to uh, to align this uh, when we put the, uh, the tension back on this. And to the left of this we've got this little uh, kind of um, bracket, little 90 degree little arm. And this little tab just here needs to actually fit inside a hole uh, that's on the engine. Uh, I'll try and get a little shot of that for you right now if we can. Uh, it's just there. Hopefully you guys can see that okay in the mirror. Just there. So that little hole right in the middle of that mirror. Uh, that's the hole that you're going to be looking for. So that little um, bracket needs to slot inside that hole when you come to, uh, to fit this in situ. There. So I've just made sure that, that little uh, bracket is inside that hole that we just showed you just a second ago. So now we'll take our nut for the tensioner and we'll just put that in uh, in situ just to stop it coming off at the moment. And not particularly tight, nice and loose like that. Just leave it like that for a second. So next if we turn this tensioner clockwise a little bit, it'll create a little bit more gap uh, for us to, uh, to get our belt on. And what we're going to do is just tighten this nut up slightly just to stop that springing back. Okay, so next if you check your uh, your cams here, it's a bit rattly like so. What you want to do is do these uh, do these up just to take the rattle out of it. But so you can still uh, move it from side to side. Audi Workshop manual says to turn the uh, cams clockwise all the way till they stop and then um, fit the uh, then fit the cam belt. Okay so now onto the cam belt itself. So there's our new uh, new cam belt. So be careful in uh, handling this, make sure you've got haven't got greasy hands and things of that nature. And be careful not to kind of fold or, or bend it or manipulate it uh, badly. So be, be a bit careful with it. Uh, but let's get it fitted. Okay, so here's your uh, here's your cam belt here. Um, some are directional. Some will have a little um, arrows to the uh, the um, direction of uh, of travel. If you like, this one hasn't. If it hasn't, it's just a good idea to put the uh, let's see the text uh, so you can so you can read it if it's got text on it. Uh, so what we're going to do with this belt now is just kind of um, loop it around the uh, the various components. And uh, as we do it, we'll kind of uh, give you a quick reminder of kind of um, how it snakes around the the various components that we need to work it around.
Okay, now before we uh, look at um, adjusting the tensioner, let's make sure that the, uh, the nuts are still uh, free on here. Sometimes when they move around, yeah, there's one there, they can uh, tighten themselves up a little bit. So I'm just going to slacken that one, uh, slacken that one back off. Like so, just to make sure that the uh, the whole thing's uh, still uh, can move a little bit, and um, we'll do that before we adjust the tensioner. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just uh, release that, that initial bit of uh, tension uh, that we put on it to begin with, like so. And then we can uh, get rid of this locking pin. So we'll just zip this uh, nut off at this stage. And we're going to put a little uh, dab of our nut lock on there. in loose for now. Okay so this is the old uh, tensioner I'm not sure how good a shot uh, I'm going to be able to get for you uh, when we uh, adjust the tensioner in here we'll try our best uh, but what we're trying to do is when you uh, adjust the tensioner we've got an arrow on here so he points in a clockwise direction so we're going to turn this I'm um, actually going to use the hex tools a little bit easier than the pin tool and I'm going to turn this uh, clockwise to increase the, uh, the tension and what will happen is this uh, little arrow just here will start to move in this direction to the right and what you want to do is get this arrow so that it stops in the middle of this little cutout just there so this, so this is going to move all the way around and stop there once it stops there what, what you need to do is uh, tighten up the, uh, the nut in the in the center there just to stop it springing back and then what we'll do is we'll get a um, uh, a torque wrench onto the nut and um, crank that up to, to proper spec as well. Uh, but like I said, we'll try and get a good shot of that if we can, uh, but this is the uh, the aim of what we're trying to do. So next we're going to tighten up the nut in the middle of the uh, tensioner. Uh, just to double check yours, yours should be the same as ours. So if you look at the cover that we removed, uh, obviously this is where the two cams sit here on the cover and this is where the uh, tensioner sits there and in the middle uh, they actually usually put the spec on the cover. So just double check the one on your cover to make sure it matches that. 20 newton meters plus an additional 45 degrees. That's what we're going to do now. Okay, so using the torque wrench We've got in there to um, 20 newton meters, but remember we've also got to give it an additional uh, 45 degrees. That's so we'll do that next. Okay, so when it says 45 degrees, it means uh, literally just that. Uh, so if you kind of start, for, so if you imagine that's 12 o'clock, uh, you want to go back 45 degrees to about there. There. Okay, one more actually. Good measure. Okay, it's 45 degrees there. And then what I'm going to do is move that 45 degrees up to a dead center. That's the plus 45 degrees. So just double check your uh, arrow at this stage, and uh, all being well, it should be dead center in the middle of that little groove, uh, just like you can see in the mirror there. Okay, so next we're going to do the, do the uh, six nuts uh, up on the front of the cams here. Just get those finger tightened. I'm just going to counter hold the uh, centre bolt uh, just whilst doing these up. Okay, and once you've uh, tightened them up kind of evenly, what you want to do is go around and just torque them up to spec with your uh, torque wrench, 25 newton meters. So now you need to remove the uh, the three uh, locking tools. Yeah, this one's okay. This one was uh, sticking a little bit before, uh, but what you'll find is when you release the uh, 
the crank at the bottom. Sometimes this will relieve the air pressure. I couldn't get this one out before, but all I did was remove the uh, crank one at the bottom and allowed that one to come out, no problems. Okay, so there we are, that is the, uh, the cam belt fitted. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, check the alignment. Now to do that, we're going to rotate the uh, crankshaft um, two rotations, which of course uh, equals one rotation at the top, and then we're going to check the alignment between the, uh, the three locking points. <clears throat> so that's the next stage. Uh, one little thing to point out as well, an annoying little thing, is this, uh, this catch on the side here actually sits and can rub uh, on this when this uh, rotates. So what you want to do is kind of lift that and make sure that's locked up out of the way. Otherwise you can kind of put a little scratch on there. It's quite quite annoying. So just make sure that's up out of the way. That's what we're going to do to, next is uh, rotate this uh, two turns on the crank, which will give us one turn on the, uh, on the cams. Uh, remember, when you're turning the uh, crankshaft, it must only go clockwise. So just keep turning it around all the way. And keep an eye on, remember these little uh, windows that have got the, uh, the little jagged bits on them. Uh, we're going to make that come all the way back round until it's almost coming back round to top centre. And then we'll try uh, doing the alignment. So keep that going, remember two rotations on the bottom, one rotation on the top. So as this one comes back round, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the, um, the exhaust cam, the cam on the left here. Uh, and check that the, uh, the when this uh, slot comes in line with the uh, locking pin hole. So we're just going to keep an eye on that as we uh, do the last bit of the turn uh, with the mirror. Let's just put the first locking pin in. Okay, so that's the second one in. So next we're just going to double check our uh, tensioner uh, setting. Yep, still looking good. And last of all we're just going to see if the uh, crank will uh, align. And it does. Lovely. And we're just going to uh, check the, uh, that the arrows align using the mirror tool. So yep, you can see there, hopefully you can see that right in the mirror, uh, the two arrows are still pointing perfectly uh, aligned with one another. So what we've done there is we've, uh, we've sat the, uh, the crank and the two uh, cams uh, so that they're definitely, and we've double checked it, uh, in relation to one another in the perfect uh, position. We can lock all three uh, quite, quite easily. Now there's a process um, that I'll cover very quickly for you in a second uh, that you should undertake um, if all three of them aren't quite aligning uh, as easily as, uh, as it has for us. Now this has worked out particularly easily today. Uh, sometimes you have to do a bit of a minor adjustment but we'll cover that next for you. Okay so quick overview of uh, any adjustments that you might need to do. Uh, this is um, exclusive of the, uh, the kind of the fine tuning uh, that can be done with VCDS. This is just to, uh, to get your alignment kind of true to factory spec. Uh, so what, what we what we did is we um, we turned the crankshaft twice and we brought the um, the uh, the exhaust uh, let's, let's call them A and B uh, A and B uh, we brought the exhaust cam uh, back up uh, to dead center as it came back up to um, to center we put the uh, the lock in so that's the first one you should lock now if you then have a, a problem where you can um, you can get this in okay and you can get the um, the crank one on okay at the bottom but you can't get uh, you can't get it in on your inlet one on, on B here then what you should do is you should undo the uh, the three bolts uh, here and uh, turn uh, uh, put a, um, uh, a a spanner on there or a socket on there and just turn it very very gently until you can get the locking pin uh, in and that so so you've then got all three locking pins back in again when you've got all three locking pins back in again tighten these back up to 25 newton meters so that's option uh, a if you and that's that's if you can option a or option number one is if you can get that pin in successfully that's the first one you always put in you can get the you can get the crank in but you can't get that one in so, so that's the first thing uh, that you can do so the next scenario that you might find yourself in is you turn it back around to top dead center get your first one in on a no problems at all uh, put this one in on B, that aligns fine, but what you're finding is when those two are in, you can't actually get the uh, the crank lock in on the bottom. Uh, now if that's the case, and that's what you're uh, that's what you're facing, then what you should do is slacken off uh, all six of these uh, nuts, three on uh, each of these, and then turn the crank uh, gently 
until you can actually um, get the uh, the locking tool um, down onto the uh, the crank at the bottom. Then once you've uh, so remember these uh, these two locking pins will be left in whilst you do that. Uh, so you've managed to get these locking pins in. Leave them in, uh, but you can't get the bottom one in. So slacken off the six bolts. Uh, move the crank a little bit, just to, enough to get you to uh, snap that um, crank locking tool into position. And then again, tighten these up to 25 newton meters. And what these uh, what these kind of um, processes do, these kind of couple of options, is all you're trying to do is get all three uh, things aligned uh, properly. So you know that your crank is at top dead center because that's locked with your uh, locking tool at the bottom. And then you also need these to line up perfectly as well. So what you're looking to do is line all three up correctly. And that's what this kind of processor allows you to do. And also one final thing to mention, if you if you do have to do uh, any of these kind of adjustments um, where you're going to slacken these off and uh, move these a, a little bit using the centre bolt to allow you to actually get a locking tool into place, uh, when you've finished your process and you're happy with it, uh, what you need to do is just make sure uh, that your, um, your tensioner is still sat in the little groove there. Now it can be, let me turn that for you, it can be up to five millimetres to the right um, now the the right, I'll show it to you. Uh, bear with me two seconds. I'll grab the uh, the old one that we took off earlier, and just give you an illustration of this. Cause it's quite an important point. Okay, so here's the uh, the arrow here, and uh, what the goal that we're looking for is to get it um, in this groove right here, which is what we've got, and that's what you want to double check um, that yours is uh, before you consider this job done. It can be up to five millimeters uh, to the right, so clockwise if you like, in this direction that allows uh, for kind of the, 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 the settlement and the kind of stretching of the belt. So if you've uh, kind of done yours and you're finding that yours is somewhere near, nearing the end of this plate, that's fine. It can sit anywhere between the center there and the, uh, and the end of the plate, that's, that's not the end of the world. Uh, but, but you must uh, double check this, uh, so you, you kind of almost consider this part of the job. So you wanna make sure you get your three locking tools in and make sure that this is in a good position uh, before you can kind of move forward and, and consider the job done. And also once you've, um, if you do have to make any uh, any of the adjustments uh, as we were talking about um, earlier, if you can't get the locking tools in and you're going to adjust either of these two cams, then once you've made your adjustment you want to repeat the process again. So let's say you've you've had to adjust uh, this one um, to, to get your pin in or whatever, then you're going to, again, once you're happy with it, and it seems right, tighten these back up, take your locking tools out, turn the crankshaft two turns again, which is one turn up here, and again, start here, locking tool in here, and follow the exact same process that we've outlined already. Uh, so you must double check it after any adjustments that you make. Okay, so in our scenario, we were, we were lucky enough there that we, uh, we've done the, um, the two uh, turns of the crank, and we managed to get ours aligned quite nicely, which is great. So we know that all three are in alignment with one another, so I've not had to slacken any of these bolts off, so everything's still tight and as it should be. We've also checked the tensioner. So now it's time to uh, remove the, uh, the locking tools, like so. Okay, so that is the uh, the cam belt um, change process uh, complete. And what we've done there uh, is we've set uh, all three in relation to one another to um, a kind of dead set factory spec, if you like. We know that all three in relation to one another are absolutely perfect because they're all you can lock all three at the same time without issue. So so that's great. However, um, what you might find in a, in kind of a reality is that you may have to um, do some fine uh, tuning and adjustment, especially as kind of cars get older, uh, components wear, uh, high mileages, uh, things of that nature. Uh, it might have, you may well have to do some, uh, some um, fine tuning. But the fine tuning can be done, um, you don't need to strip the car down to, to this extent, so at this point we're going to put it back together. Uh, but the fine tuning, if it's required, is going to be done on your two, um, on your two cams at the top here. Uh, so you can actually access those just by removing the, uh, the top cover and having access to, to these nuts to, to make small adjustments. Uh, we'll cover that in a little bit more uh, detail um, later in, in the uh, video as to um, kind of taking a look at the readings on VCDS. Okay, so start with the lower cover. Um, and we've uh, got some uh, some bolts for these. Uh, the easiest way is uh, you can you can kind of see this one here, which is this top hole here. If you um, just screw that one in temporarily, and that allow you to uh, to swing it round and align the uh, the bottom too. Quick 
quick little thing just to mention where when you're coming to uh, to refit your uh, your plates when I refit when I've refitted this one uh, you probably won't be able to see it now hopefully not when I refitted this one I found that this corner here was actually just touching the edge of the belt there which is obviously no good um, so it'd be worth going around and, and checking it seems like this has kind of been a little bit bent out of shape so what I've done with some pliers I'm just bending it slightly uh, slightly uh, outwards that's something to, uh, to have a look for is when you when you uh, fit these covers is just look around and make sure because they do bend over time they do warp as you can see this one's got a bit of corrosion on it uh, but obviously you, you want to make sure that your belt's not actually rubbing on on any of these kind of edges so next we're going to be um, refitting the uh, damper uh, for the uh, crank now obviously we've got four bolts but if you have a look in there there's actually in between these two bolts there's a slightly smaller hole right there and that's because on the um, on the crank it's actually got like a, a little locating pin and that ensures that when this goes back on it goes back on in exactly the same position uh, that it was when it's taken off so obviously this has got however many miles it's, it's, it's got on it. it used to be going traveling in the same direction if you then bolt it on in a slightly different way you might get a slight imbalance on it um, because it will be kind of throwing itself out if that makes any sense so we'll show you where this uh, locating pin is uh, but you must make sure that the locating pin goes into that hole and then we're going to add the four bolts okay so having a look down on the crank here you can see just there uh, just between those two holes bang in the middle of the mirror there that's the uh, locating pin so that's the other uh, pin that we need to feed through that hole uh, between the bolts uh, that's on the dampener now with regards to the uh, the bolts uh, that, that hold this uh, in situ uh, as per Audi workshop uh, manual uh, these should be replaced uh, every time this uh, dampener is taken off of the car and put back on uh, so we're actually going to get four new ones although these in, are in nice uh, fairly nice condition uh, we're going to get four brand new ones uh, to do the job properly Here's our four uh, brand new screws fresh in from uh, Audi. Okay, so when you've got the alignment correct, uh, what you want to do is just uh, get your four bolts uh, back in. And just for the moment, they're just going to be uh, hand tightened. So just get all four of those uh, hand tightened into place, uh, and then we'll look at uh, torquing them up to spec. Okay, so I zip the four bolts into a uh, situ. Uh, what I'm going to do quickly, just get them as tight as I can by hand. And what you want to do is kind of go directly opposite. Don't go around in a, in a circle. Kind of treat it like uh, tightening the bolts on a on a wheel. Make sure they're just as tight as you can get them uh, with your hand. Like so, so there's no, uh, no play in it. So next we're going to torque it up to, uh, to spec. Uh, the spec on these is 10 newton meters, uh, which is very little, uh, plus uh, 90 degrees because they're stretch bolts, I to believe they are. So 10 newton meters to begin with. Like so, and like I said, uh, if we go to the directly opposite ones. We'll start at the top, so I'll go straight to the one at the bottom rather than go around in a circle and just do all, all of these up to 10 newton meters. So now I need to counter hold the air center, yeah, and add 90 degrees, which is a quarter turn, onto each of your four bolts. You must remember to counter hold it in the center, otherwise, the whole thing will spin. Uh, if it does, uh, you don't have to worry too much because obviously it's turning clockwise, which is the correct direction, uh, unlike uh, as uh, when you undid them to begin with, uh, but obviously that's not ideal. Uh, so it's 10 newton meters plus a quarter of a turn, 90 degrees. Next we've got the, uh, the rubber cap uh, for the middle of the uh, damper. So we're going to uh, put that back into situ. Just make sure it's seated in properly uh, all the way around. You don't want that coming out. And once you're happy, move on. So next we're going to take the, uh, the cam belt cover. We'll put that back into, uh, into situ. Just have a kind of a look around it and make sure it's uh, fitting, uh, fitting into place nicely. Once you're happy, two clips there. 
and one clip underneath. So next we're going to be uh, refitting the auxiliary drive belt. Remember if you're reusing your uh, old belt, uh, you should have marked it beforehand in the direction of travel, make sure that you put it back on the same way. Uh, what I'm going to do is just show you um, the kind of direction that the uh, belt takes uh, around these uh, various components uh, to help you um, uh, when you come to refit it. So basically if you imagine the belt comes around the outside of the alternator, it then goes straight down around the uh, outside of your power steering pump. And then from here it comes around the, the bottom of the power steering pump, comes around this uh, little roller at the bottom here, comes around there, then comes back up uh, onto your um, uh, aircon pump here. It comes around the bottom of the aircon pump, straight on to the, uh, the crank. It comes up around the crank, around the bottom of the tensioner, and back up uh, onto your um, uh, alternator there. Uh, so that's the re uh, the route that it takes. Uh, so let's get it fitted. Okay, so here's the uh, the belt we were using today. Uh, it's a genuine uh, Volkswagen belt, a uh, Audi VW, uh, as you can see. Uh, so this is the uh, the proper proper belt for the job. Okay, so I've put the, uh, the belt into uh, situ here. The only thing that we uh, hasn't wrapped around down at the bottom there is the uh, aircon pump down the bottom uh, right hand corner there. And the reason for that is obviously we need to uh, release the, uh, the uh, tensioner uh, to allow the, uh, back to, the belt to slacken off and that should give us the slack we need uh, to get that final part on upon which we can um, uh, release the tension. give you the uh, the slack that you need and just before we release that I'm just going to make sure all the teeth are aligned properly because they're not on there let's see that all the uh, the belts are aligned on the uh, on the teeth properly all the way around so when I release it we're not going to damage the belt see that's sitting nicely this one wasn't so I'm glad that I double check that that one's perfect that was good as well so now with that in situ, we'll slowly release the tension back on. And there we go. Now that's the auxiliary drive belt changed. Okay, so that's the cam belt change complete on this car. So now it's a case of putting the other vehicle back together. Uh, obviously, um, you're going to want to do the, um, the coolant top up. Uh, you're going to make sure you, uh, you do that. So it's obviously you've lost a lot of coolant, so that needs to be topped up or as we're doing in this particular car, the full coolant change, uh, for which we've already uh, done a video, which we'll provide a link to. Uh, additionally, the slam panel's got to go back into its original position. Uh, your headlights have got to go back in, your front bumper's got to go back on, uh, etc. as well. Uh, obviously, as you've already probably seen, uh, we've got videos for those. Just a reminder, the links for those will be below this video for you as well. Uh, so that's the actual cam belt change complete. Uh, however, we did mention at the beginning that we we're going to be uh, showing you a, a little bit uh, more on how to, uh, to fine tune the timing uh, using VCDS. Uh, so we'll be doing that in the, in the uh, next part of this video. Uh, but if you, uh, if you don't need that, if you've uh, put it all back together and your car's running lovely, that's it, that's job done. That's the factory spec, great, finished. Now if you do need to, to uh, fine tune it, keep watching and we'll take a look at that as well. Has this video helped save you money? If so, maybe you would consider helping us in return. Total Technic cannot exist without the generous support of our viewers, so any donation is both genuinely appreciated and helps to ensure that Total Technic can continue to grow and bring you more great video content. To make a donation of any size in any currency, simply visit paypal.me forward slash Total Technic. Thank you for your support. So for the final part of this video, we are just gonna have a quick look at making adjustments to the cam belt once it's set. Uh, this is uh, particularly important uh, if you go online and do some kind of research. If you're having a, a problem, uh, common problems might include um, a drop in fuel consumption after a cam belt change, uh, a rough or a juddery idle, uh, or a smoking uh, from the exhaust as well. Uh, all those kind of things can be uh, attributed to the um, 
to a CAN belt change. If you go online, you'll see uh, li literally hundreds of people saying, I've just started having these problems since having my CAN belt change. So if that's something that uh, affects you, you'll probably be very interested in um, kind of staying tuned for the uh, final part of this video. One thing to, uh, to point out uh, before we do get stuck into it, uh, obviously uh, the, the CAN belt uh, change, as you've seen, is quite involved in itself. Uh, fine tuning um, the, uh, the CANs, um, again, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those uh, the jobs that you, want to, you only really want to tackle if you've got a little bit of experience. It's quite a simple thing to do, as long as you're uh, careful and, you, and you're gentle with it and the movements that you make are small, as you'll see later, uh, you should be okay. Uh, but if you are having kind of lots of problems uh, post cam belt change and uh, you, you, know, you, can't kind of, you, know, you, you don't feel comfortable that you've got uh, enough uh, knowledge or experience and this video is not going to help you enough, you really should take your car to a professional to, to let them have a look at it. But without further ado, let's have a quick chat about making fine adjustments to the cam belt once fitted. Now to check the settings uh, for your cam belt, uh, there's a couple of things you can look at using a software package called VCDS, uh, also known as Bagcom. We'll put a, a web address so you can go and check that out for yourself. Uh, it's not the, uh, the cheapest software in the world, uh, but it does offer very, very good value uh, for what it is. It's a very, very powerful piece of kit and it allows you to do a lot of stuff. And if you're looking at doing work on, on your Audis uh, kind of long term, uh, you should definitely invest in, in a VCDS. It's a great bit of kit. There's a couple of things in particular we need to look at in that software. OK, so to get to the correct section in VCDS, uh, what you want to do is get through to the measuring blocks uh, section. Now to do this, uh, what you want to do is uh, go through the uh, menu system and uh, select uh, um, number one, which is uh, engine. And then after that, you want to uh, go down and select the uh, measuring blocks section. This will take you through to the main measuring blocks page. And on there, there's a couple of uh, different uh, measuring blocks uh, that we're going to input. Uh, you'll see there's a, a, an up and down um, a section on the right, on the left hand side where you can um, change the number or you can just type it in. And the numbers that we're looking at are number four, that's zero, zero, 004, and 1515, so 015. So first of all, let's look at 004. Now the most important box is the last one. There's four different boxes, it's the last one you want to be focusing on. Now when you go into this, it should say below it, torsion value. Now, as you can see uh, in uh, our software, uh, since uh, um, uh, VAGCOM have made an update, uh, we're no longer getting the correct uh, title. Uh, we're getting a repeated title. This does sometimes happen to the blocks on VCDS uh, when they release the updates, unfortunately. But yours should say torsion value. And the value that you're looking for is, uh, ideally, that needs to be set on zero. OK, now um, that is actually for the, uh, the inlet cam. Um, so if you need to make adjustments to that figure, uh, that would be the inlet cam that you'd adjust to get that as close as you can to zero. Next up, let's look at number 015015 on VCDS. Uh, this is uh, for the uh, exhaust cam. What we're looking at in particular is the uh, third block along, which is the uh, fuel consumption, which is measured in uh, litres per hour. And you'll see a naught point, uh, whatever figure it might be in there. Uh, the ideal uh, figure to, uh, for you to target is between 0 0.4 litres an hour and 0 0.6 uh, litres an hour. Uh, that's the ideal factory spec for that setting. And this is uh, for the exhaust cam, uh, so if you need to make any adjustments on that, obviously it's the exhaust cam that needs to be adjusted uh, to change the uh, litres per hour. Now you may recall right back at the very, very start of the video, uh, we did say you'd want to watch the whole video in its entirety uh, before you actually undertake the cam belt uh, job itself. The reason being is that in an ideal world, what you'd want to do is you'd want to use uh, BCDS, the software we're looking at today, to take your readings uh, before uh, you change your cam belt. Uh, and that's, that's, that can be especially important uh, if you're very, very happy with the, um, the, the way that your car runs uh, before you do your cam belt change. So then you've got potential figures that you can match up to before and after. So if you take your figures before, you do your cam belt change, and you're not quite happy with how the car's running, you get a couple of problems, you can use VCDS, see how far off those settings are, and try and rewind them or fast forward them to match up with your old settings, which you know that you'll be happy with. Likewise, if you've already got a problem before you're doing the uh, cam belt change, or maybe you're redoing the cam belt changes uh, we're doing in, in this particular car, uh, again, uh, that'll give you an idea of what kind of bad figures would look like before you start, and hopefully uh, what you end up with will be far more positive figures.
Okay, so we're going to show you how to do a quick adjustment uh, on the uh, cams. Uh, the one that we're going to be adjust adjusting is the exhaust cam. Uh, that adjusts the um, the fuel uh, setting, uh, which is measured in uh, litres per hour. Uh, this one's running at 0.8. Uh, ideally, we'd like to get that between 0.4 and 0.6, so we'll do an adjustment. Okay, so we're going to remove the uh, cam belt cover. Uh, to enable us to do that, uh, we're going to take this uh, intake pipe uh, back out of the way. So you want your size 18 uh, in the uh, centre, uh, that's to counter hold and obviously you're going to use that to make the adjustment. Then your size 13 spanner and just slacken off each of the, uh, each of the three nuts uh, around the outside. So do the same for all three. So next we use the, uh, the centre bolt to make the uh, adjustment. Uh, bear in mind uh, that a one millimetre adjustment can make a heck of a difference. So you're only you know, trying to move it you know, kind of half a millimetre at most. So you're just trying to move it just a squidge and then we'll tighten it back up and then you have to retest. Okay, so we've made our adjustment. So now we need to retighten these uh, these screws back up, and then we can do a test again. Okay, so just for reference, I turned mine uh, clockwise, and uh, that actually made the uh, consumption um, uh, go up. Uh, so all I'm going to do is make the adjustment again, and obviously uh, we're going to go um, anti-clockwise this time to reduce it. So there we have it guys, that's the end of the video, thank you very much for watching, uh, we hope that this has enabled you to uh, change your own cam belt, uh, a little bit of confidence and uh, make all the adjustments that you need to and I hope this has been very useful for you and of course hopefully you've saved a lot of money along the way. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website totaltechnic.com and we'll see you on the next video.